The second part of the e-collar series that I'm doing, I'm going to talk about the pager facility on this. So this is the Garmin Delta. The other one, which is the Mini Educator from e-collar technologies, has most of the same facilities as this, okay, most of the same settings. So the e-collar can apply electricity either in a, um, a, a NIC setting, so it's just a, a one burst, okay, one short burst of electricity. The other one is a long prolonged burst of electricity. Then we've got the vibrate setting. Hopefully you can hear that through the microphone, okay. So I'm pressing that and it vibrates. Or we've got this one, which beeps, okay. Now, the vibrate or the beep on this, okay, can be used as a cue for a positively reinforced behavior if the dog likes these, okay? And how that would work would be you would build the behavior, so you'd build the dog recall into you, and what you would now do is you would vibrate this, dog recalls, and you reinforce that behavior with food or toys, okay? Now, if that is all that you're doing and that is all that you're using the collar for, then I will accept that that is a positive, sorry, I won't accept, that is a positively reinforced behavior using the vibrate facility on this as the cue, okay? Now, what happens if the dog does not respond to that vibration? That's the important part. Do we then start up applying electricity at that point, either to punish the not coming back or to apply electricity and then take the electricity off when the dog does come back? In which case we're now starting to move into positive punishment and negatively reinforced behaviors, okay? In which case that is now no longer a positive experience for the dog, okay? Because we're applying something aversive either to stop an unwanted behavior or we're removing an aversive stimulus to reinforce a wanted behavior, okay? And it is, that's the escape avoidance part of it. So the escape is the negative reinforcement, the dog's doing something to get this off this, or it's doing a behavior to avoid getting the, the, this put on in the first place, okay? Now this is the really important part of this. Antecedents or cues do not drive behavior consequences drive behavior and that is a that's biological law it's it's the laws of learning it's learn it's just it is what is going on it's not my opinion of it it is pure skinnerian learning okay operant learning consequences drive behavior not cues not antecedents so to give you an example of this imagine your your boss asks you to come in for shift for work and he has not paid you for the past six weeks he can ask you till you are blue in the face it doesn't matter you're not going in because the previous your previous experience of going into work has not worked have it so he can call you all day long, you're not coming back in, okay? So it's not him calling you that makes it happen, it's your previous reinforcement history or not, which makes the behavior happen or not. That is vitally important because what we've got now is the vibrate now acts as the boss calling or you calling the dog. And if you've not done enough previous reinforcement for the dog coming back, this the dog will just ignore this, okay? Now, your dog, the, the, the discussion that I have seen um, on the thread that I've had over the last week or so is that the vibration, because it's a, a physical sensation, it's a physical touch to the dog, that this makes it somehow more pertinent, okay? The, the association of the cue to the behavior, the strength of that has got nothing to do or very little to do with the actual signal itself. It's to do with the pairing of that signal with that behavior equals the big payday, okay? So our dogs, our dogs have evolved as a species to be able to hear a mouse moving through the grass, okay? If they can hear a mouse moving through the grass, they can certainly hear you calling them or hear you blowing a whistle. Okay, if there's other things going on in the environment, what they're doing is they haven't discriminated that that is important enough. So, and if they're, they're discriminating that this vibration is important enough, it's either because the pairing is stronger. Logan, that's enough, son. Atta boy. Ready? 
either the pairing is stronger with this or the vibration means something else the vibration means something else so it might mean that it's actually aversive and the dog is wanting to avoid that okay so that's really important okay the cue itself does not drive behavior i know i'm laboring this point but it came up over and over and over again in the last few um in the last couple of weeks in these two threads that i had up it's come up time and time and time again and for me that just illustrates that people don't know enough about the, the about operant conditioning and how it works okay the other thing is that people will say that um where dogs will communicate by touching each other okay most dogs will not communicate by touching each other. Most of it's done through eye contact, body language, moving in, into and out of space. If you look at dogs, that is how they will communicate with each other. It's only when the, the ante gets raised that they will now start using physical contact in order to, to change the other dog's behavior. That's really important. So these things are just, they're just myths that people use in order to um, further their own argument. And it doesn't do any of us a, a any service at all I don't think um, because we're not arguing from a point of accuracy or evidence okay so that's that um, now again I'll post the rules of commenting on no threads within threads are too difficult to moderate if the discussion has moved on it's moved on I am not discussing the ethics of these just now and I'm not discussing whether we should be using them or not all I'm doing is discussing how they work okay um, and I'm trying to keep the conversation relevant to how they work, not that they work, they do work. If they didn't work, people wouldn't use them. So we can modify a dog's behavior using these, but whether or not we should be is a discussion for another time, okay? So that's the page you're setting. Um, questions or comments below. Uh, again, keep it civil, and we're, we're discussing this from a, um, from a standpoint of operant conditioning only how they work. If anything that I have said you think is inaccurate, evidence it for me, okay? Uh, and hopefully that's been useful. And thanks for your engagement because we've got a lot of engagement, we've got a lot of people talking about this, which is good, can only be helpful, all right? Because um, it means that we educate ourselves about them, whether we're gonna use them or not. All right, and thanks, uh, thanks a lot again, guys, all right?